for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground episode 103. I'm more of a poet, but some call me a rapper. No NFC present, but always fun when I tap her. She's flowing freely. Round of applause, clapper. I like them skinny. Each one a thigh gapper. I like a little spice, but never cinnamon. Sometimes I lose track of which sin I'm in. I tried to do good, but I'm a cinnamon. I tried to follow his word, but find a synonym. I write a lot and find heavy words of real meaning. It's only lighters that don't pass the screen. TSA that can't... F- Content politics leaning. Some addicted to fear have a hard time weaning. Only quitters quit. Take one shot pellet. Language I literate like I can't spell it. Feels like I've been writing forever, but I'm just getting started. It's an exciting endeavor. Hard to slow down. Retard it. Deliberate flow. No haphazard timing. Deliberate words. No haphazard rhyming. Need scaling solutions. Not haphazard climbing. I like to plan my chaos. Not think haphazard I'm in. Roll off my tongue with precise word placement. Still breathing each lung, despite undeterred debasement. Gamblers become politicians, actors. I call them morticians, ACDC adapters. Sickly, two-faced, act like they backed us. Prickly, plant-based, green like a cactus. Green, dollar-backed, sociopathic exactors. But Bitcoin is secure, so they ain't hacked us. I say what I want. Sometimes I contradict her. The way she ends up shaking, hits high on the Richter. We look good in the mirror. No need for tricks, sir. Pleb underground. Welcome, Elixir. Dude! Straight fire, straight fire. Guys, that's right. Episode 103, Pleb Underground Weekly Show. And you understood correctly. We've got fellow Bitcoiner and Pleb Elixir joining us. My dude, awesome to have you on the show. I'm super excited. You and I have never really spoken before, so I'm excited to learn about all things Elixir and what your thoughts are on the space, the Bitcoin space. Thank you, gents. Really happy to be here. Looking forward to it. Sweet, sweet. All right. We're going to move it on over to the numbers. Yeah, the numbers, of course, brought to us by Time Chain Stats and Time Chain Calendar. What do the numbers look like this week, Phil? At the time of this recording, the block height is 861,172. The Bitcoin fiat exchange, 59,474. Look at us. Big max for BTC. 11,546. That's right. You're getting more crappy Big Macs this week than you were last week for your corn. Ah, total public lightning capacity, 5,224. Fastest fee. Fastest fee. That's right. All of the ordinals and runes and stamps and whatever enjoyers in this belief. Nine sats per fee byte and Moscow time, 1681. I feel like this was a hard week for people. I, I don't know. I don't know. I saw a lot of uh, a lot of despair. I'm noticing there's like the battle between the uh, the 58k gang and and yellow. You know, yeah, the... so like Europe Europe was getting a bit hot. Um, the the battle between Greece and Turkey is uh, is heating on? up, and so uh, I went to Portugal. I thought it would be safe safe there. Uh, it's about as, uh, it's the furthest west uh, you can be in Europe, and so uh, it's good to get away from the the, the Greeks and the the Turkish fight, fighting out over the the battle between uh, 100k and 58k. Elixir, um, from what we were talking about uh, prior to the show. Uh, you had explained that uh, you were on, you were off Twitter for a little while. Um, have you have you been able to catch up on the uh, the whole 58k, uh, the 58k gang and the 100k? Um, don't stop believing me. I could you... spend I could spend a few hours trying to catch up. I don't think I'll understand it to be honest. Um... <laughs> he was. What do you mean? He was only off Twitter for like a month, not like four years. We've been at 58k forever now. Oh, Three I understand years. the 58k mean. I don't understand why uh, Yellow and, and the rest of them are arguing about the difference between it. But um, uh. no, I, I've, I've been off Twitter for a wee while. I rejoined today, funnily enough, just by pure coincidence. And um, yeah, it's it's tough going on Twitter at the moment. So it's nice to have a bit of lighthearted uh, nonsense from from those guys. But uh, the, the Twitter sphere is mainly to contact the people that I know, the Bitcoiners. And the amount of words that I have muted on Twitter to try and avoid the absolute catastrophe of clan world at the moment so um it, it wasn't working so i needed a little break but it's it's nice do, to take that break every now and again seeing as we were in the numbers let, let's look at the numbers do do you do you have more words muted or people blocked on twitter oh i went through a stage of blocking anybody who had a stupid opinion it was it was to the point of i was blocking far too many people uh, so just, who have you just, not blocked then 
sound bitcoiners like the rest of us anybody in the uh the um the dolphin crew it was it's it's mainly words like i don't want to read the word president trump harris biden all that kind of stuff i'm trying to mute it the problem with it is is the retweets still get through and so it's even if you avoid the Wait, four so you have and you you could turn that off by the way you were into bitcoin so you, you don't have to pay attention to politics account. i thought that was just me <laughs> yeah it's um it's it's definitely been ramped up a lot more and i think it's important to be aware of it because you we're going to need to know right if um if there's going to be a an anti-crypto government or a pro-crypto government it's going to help or uh make problems for us so it's good to be aware of it but at the same time having it continually pushed into your face about the wars that are going on and the politics and left and right and it's all just so such a distraction from you know what we're really here for which is defunding them all and trying to get them out of our lives rather than paying attention to it yeah i think it's just a lot of poison and divisiveness you know it's uh the, this these these polarizing type of situations i just don't i i find it so weird right like because especially when it comes to politics right politicians they, they talk about oh yeah you know we need to unify the country and do all this stuff but at the same time it's divisive politics it's divisive issues it's uh, i don't know man I, I can't reconcile this crap you know I just thought, think, seeing as we're talking politics, let's ah. let's share politics is numbers. <laughs> hey, right. politics, look at your numbers. Your numbers suck. <laughs> well, I think well, if, if, it was, numbers. if it was pure incompetence, I could at least mm -hmm. understand it. But I think what annoys me the most is that it's quite obviously not incompetence. Uh, the UK is the perfect example this week. They've cut um, fuel allowance for old age pensioners, and it's going to cripple thousands of people and the same and day they they're announcing a bunch of money to ukraine yeah 600 million to ukraine the same day they're literally pissing in people's faces and they're I, it almost feels like they're wanting to people to get to the streets so they can enact some kind of martial law or lockdown it feels like they're trying to trigger people and gaslight it to the to the extent of that um Wait, I'd love it Alex, why do you support some socialism and not others surely the 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 the, the, the winter fuel allowance for boomers like it is not what they like surely they, they've already got all the money like the boomers like surely they don't really need it um, I don't know how many boomers you know, mate, but I know quite a lot of people that uh, that aren't in that situation. No, I know. I'm, I'm, but, I'm but, some, but I'm, 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 I, I am in agreement in that that we shouldn't have to, we, we shouldn't have to be subsidising our pensioners because the system should work, and that these people that have worked hard all their lives, their pension should feed that for them. But uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have that option. But I think I think one of the big reasons for the, for the the sort of malaise over the past month or so is is the price as well. We've we nearly tapped all time high at seventy seventy five k. And we've just chopped for most of the year. And everyone's I think everyone's in that tentative mode of, all right, let's wait for Q4. Let's see what happens. And in the meantime, people are kind of twiddling their thumbs and looking for people to fight with. So uh, there's a lot of that going on too. I'm just watching those numbers change. <laughs> sitting here, I'm staring at this thing and I'm going, we're never getting out of this. <laughs> like, how long ago do you think they, they, they figured out that they, they weren't getting out of this? And when I say they, I'm talking about the uh, the government. So the, right? the liability. Did they, was there ever any intention? One, right, like about or like th about six hundred bottom right six hundred and forty eight thousand uh, dollars per citizen is 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 liabilities uh, currently. Uh, that means like how much debt is currently uh, existing per person plus what has been promised but not currently funded, uh, and that's what they mean by these unfunded liabilities things that have be essentially been signed into law but haven't been actually given the money for um but essentially yeah exist i know the uk said that they were going to tri tri treble the, their their national debt over the next uh like 30 years yeah. the us are the us going to do better i know the us uh like to kind of you know com compete and do and do bigger numbers um, um you know what's really interesting about that that chart that you were just showing all the way at the bottom okay it shows the national assets and then the assets per citizen so the national assets keeps going up but the assets per citizen just stays the same right all the way at the bottom right the bottom left here us total national assets and then assets per citizen so <laughs> I mean, I think that's par for the course. I'm even surprised that that number is as high as it is. 
Right, so that number did actually just go up one. Like, remember, like, uh, yeah. Phil, there's quite a few people in the United States, so it needs to go up, like, 330 million or something for it to go up, like, one per person. Yeah. I think it did just go up from, what, like, by one. Uh, it did. None, none, nonetheless, yeah, there's, there's, like, a lot of numbers here. Um, uh, and I don't got... see many good numbers, but like, let's let's jump around and look at some numbers here. So, uh, apparently, the top one percent of wealth in the United States, uh, you need like uh, eighteen million dollars. When is Bitcoin going to be worth eighteen million dollars? I don't know. Probably sometime in the next eighteen years. Who knows? U.S. millionaires, twenty three point seven million. Well, they're never going to be able to own one whole Bitcoin each. So, I don't thought. know, at some point, who knows? When that. moon, Alexa, when moon? Well, we've, we've got already some... moved. We've already done what we needed to do in as far as um, Bitcoin works, right? We're 15 years in. It's it's mooned. It's done what it needs to do. As far as price mooning, I think that's all going to be related to what happens with them too. And if they decide to print another ten trillion in a few weeks to cover whatever disease they're going to make up or ever reason for the um for the coming problems that they're going to make up, um, then that number we could be at a million by the end of the year without wanting to sound too much like Samson. Um, it's it's all relevant. It's all a relative to whatever you're going to measure it in. Uh, and yeah, we could moon so in the UK Phil, a lot sooner. Than I don't know what happened here. But I don't know what happened. But but scams and Mao, uh, his opinions have infiltrated British Bitcoin, and he's paying some Bitcoiner to talk about Aqua, and they all started getting obsessed with dolphins. And one of them even gave me like a dolphin badge when I was at the beach retreat. Like I don't know what's going on, but Scamson has uh, long tentacles, uh, and I, I don't know what he's up to. Yeah, I I can't disagree with you. And unfortunately, even though we love the hopium, even though we love the hopium, um, the uh, the Samson hopium, I still remember it from last cycle. Right? He was calling for he was he was already calling for a million a long time ago. And if you were paying attention to that and you have paper hands, you most likely got wrecked. Uh, but but the last uh, I just wanted to point out the last article for the numbers uh, as if uh, as if nobody knew right as if nobody knew MicroStrategy has acquired. Another 18,300 BTC as of the time of this recording. Uh, and guys, honestly, I know we report on it, but like, does it even matter anymore? Does it even matter? He's got another billion to go as well. I'm sorry? I think, didn't he raise two billion? Yeah. So he's got just shy of another Fuck billion. Fuck Saylor, guys. Like, come on, we've got better things to talk about than Michael Saylor. I know, but he's, it's the numbers, right? It's the numbers. And that and that's a Bitcoin number, you know? And for some reason, people, you know, people enjoy hearing that that wealthy people are buying more Bitcoin than they could ever afford. So. It's yeah. cuckery. It's pure cuckery is what it is. It's like cheer, cheering on. Oh, yeah. And, and it's a bit like the Olympics, right? It's like, oh, this person from my country is doing well. Uh, therefore, that means I'm doing better or like I should be proud of some, something. Oh, I should be proud of my state because, oh, wait, it's a status psyop. Well done, guys. You're buying it. <laughs> very well put. Very well put. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up the numbers. We're going to move it on over to the Fireside Chat. The Fireside Chat is brought to you by Thunder Funder. I love Bitcoin. Buy my shitcoin. Thunder Funder is a funding portal registered with the SEC and a member of FINRA. Their mission is to provide retail investors access to investments while supporting the growth of open source projects. Check them out at thunderfunder.com so basically guys um muzz enabled you guys to be degenerates and you and enabled you to think well if you think you're better at bitcoin better than bitcoin at like knowing where the you know where's where's your money where's your money better place than bitcoin if you believe that you have some ideas um then then go to thunder funder and prove us all right welcome back everyone the fireside chat you know the deal we've got fellow bitcoiner and pleb elixir joining us dude um let's let's kick it off right away walton knows my deal i want to know the rabbit hole story let's start there how how did you find bitcoin why did you find bitcoin how are we here i'm going to go out on a limb and say my story is 
probably very similar to most of your listeners. It's 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 oh. nothing extravagant. Um, I watched it. I watched hey, ten the... years ago. I wanted to buy drugs. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that but exactly that yes um i watched a, a documentary in about 2007 2008 called zeitgeist slash zeitgeist addendum where they uh, explained awesome. all yeah peter joyce is, doesn't like bitcoin but his his documentaries were brilliant um and they explained all the problems with the global financial system and so i should have been pretty well primed for when bitcoin was being uh, released 2009 2010 but but i simply wasn't i 2012 2013 i was attempting to purchase some illicit substances and and the chap said to me use bitcoin and i didn't know anything about it he set me all up with uh i had a wallet with a passphrase on it it was properly set up as a as a uh, an og bitcoiner um used it great and within a week forgot i even owned it just didn't even realize it um barely heard about bitcoin i heard there was some australian guy made it and he came out and now that he was out it was all going to go it was must have been just some ponzi didn't really hear very much about it until probably about christmas time 2016 start of 2017 when that funny enough that same chap said to me hey bitcoin's doing well and i was like what do you mean and i think the price would have been around about a thousand or so and i was for me in 2017 a thousand pounds was a hell of a lot of money and i was like oh my god i've got a bitcoin um and i spent three, four months trying to get that Bitcoin and could not get hold of it. So there is one Bitcoin sitting there uh, that I paid about 100 quid for in about 2012, 2013 um, that will never be never be found. So that's a gift to the rest of the network. Um, Wait, so you, are you more OG than Dita? Like that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, kind of. Like I say, I, I, nothing happened within Bitcoin from 2013 until 2017. And then when 2017 happened, I was shitcoin central i was buying iota verge ripple everything i could get my hands on and there was no there was no bitcoin twitter to tell me elsewise and the um the only real sort of places that i could go to was youtube when you have carl the moon and nicholas what's his face and all of these kind of shitcoiners i had no idea why i was buying all of this stuff isn't but... carl the moon like 12 years old though yeah absolutely <laughs> And he was a he was a millionaire. He's uh, loaded. I was going. This guy seems to know. He's quite loaded for his parents. Like what? <laughs> um, and so yeah, I turned a couple of hundred quid into a couple of thousand quid, and I was like, well, I'm obviously a trading genius because I'm going to do this forever, and I'm going to be a in millionaire. A bull market. It's going to be easy. Um, and then obviously it didn't, and 2018 happened, and and I think that was my turning point. A lot of my friends when uh, crypto's over and went back to their normal life. That was the turning point for me. That's when I, I start, started. I started to put beautiful. the work in in 2018 and and learning about Bitcoin rather than getting rich. Um, and it was it was pretty much towards the end of 2018 where we were having those hash wars between Bcash and BSV, uh, mm -hmm. and all that stuff was kind of going on. I realized, oh, there really is only Bitcoin. The rest is all shit. And it was it was the drop to 3K that made me dump all shit coins. I got rid of everything. And didn't even hold Ethereum or anything like that. Just went full Bitcoin. But even at that time, 2019, the whole point in me getting into Bitcoin was to buy Bitcoin wait for it to go up, sell it and be rich. That was it. It was a trade for me. I didn't really yeah. get it. It was, I wanted to make some money from it. It wasn't until uh, Q2 of 2020 when these um, global tyranny terrorists decided to lock us into our house that I was like, oh my God, it's not just for third world countries with despot leaders that need this kind of currency. It's going to be for us as well. We're going to need our own self-sovereign currency. Um, and that was a big turning point for me. And, and since 2020, my life's completely changed. I've just been all in, not just all in Bitcoin from a financial side, but giving uh, spe well, not speeches, but trying to teach people about Bitcoin, trying to orange pill as many people and just making them understand the problems with the financial system and getting them to Bitcoin that way. Uh, and that's it, really. Nothing's really changed since buying Bitcoin as much as I can and, uh, and trying to spread the word as, uh, as best I can. Dude, absolutely beautiful. And while you were explaining that, it just got me thinking, right, about how so many of us are, you know, just reactionary. And and as a result, right, um, unfortunately, there's so many people that no matter how much effort we make into explaining to them the, you know, the importance of the qualities of Bitcoin, uh, they don't understand those qualities until faced with a certain situation. So I, I do believe that some of us were actually fortunate to you know, to have let's say uh, a bank uh, censor us, right, or debank us early on in our lives, 
and and essentially teach us that that money wasn't ours, right? I, I mean, in my case, like that was something that happened, and as a result, right, uh, it, that that was a good primer to finding something that the government cannot censor, and. I, I do think that even though there's more people coming to Bitcoin, I, I do believe that the government overreach is one of the best marketing tools that, that we have, right? The overreach and the fact that they've got that money printer, that sweet money printer that they can't they can't get enough of. It's in so normal spaces like, now. Go on. Hmm? Less less reach over, more reach around. Is that is that <laughs> what you're campaigning for? You know what? Why oh. not? Give us the reach around. <laughs> We've got nothing left anyways. <laughs> oh God. All right. So, um, you know what? Um, I, I want to go back now that you, uh, now that you gave us the rabbit hole story, um, clearly, uh, clearly you decided after the shit coining and getting wrecked, you realized, Hey, there's way more to this. And you became like a, like a Bitcoin pleb. And one of the conversations that we were having, uh, before the, you know, before the show was just a, you know, about, right. Like just a, being a, a Bitcoiner and um, specifically, I, I know right now, because not everyone uses Bitcoin, there is this subculture of Bitcoiners, but at some point, right, when when it gets big enough, that I, I don't believe that that classification will necessarily exist. But at the moment, there kind of is one. And I guess I want to pick your brain. What are your thoughts on, you know, what kind of makes a Bitcoin pleb a pleb? So I'd probably say, the the bitcoin ethos is to just try and build uh, a better world for everybody um build a strong community of healthy people building you know based around western values or american values if you like of freedom of speech and freedom of um your own financial freedom your own sovereignty and anybody who shares those values and i guess with the addendum of as long as you're not shit coining as well really um people do that are just normal people that are completely disillusioned with clown world that are looking for both a, a physical and financial escape from that to become more self-sovereign um and I think within that group, uh, within that definition of pleb, there's wide ranging varieties of people. So it's difficult to, to to box people into a very specific, oh, you are this. And therefore, you if you don't do this, you're not a pleb. I think as long as people who watch, listen to this podcast, people who are on Bitcoin Twitter that are communicating with each other, people that are building, um, that are putting things up on GitHub, that are just building to try and... Um, you know, things like Noster and things like that, people that are on that, those are the people that I would be sort of considering plebs. I would also, I would also add something that um, either uh, you or Walton said before, right? But essentially, and I, I think that you maybe both agreed on was that, you know, you're the same person on the internet as you are in real life, right? So people being real. And I, and I think that that's right. Like that, that fits into that definition as well. So I, I, that really, that stuck with me that, that you guys said that because that obviously was important to me too. And people get surprised, right? Like people get surprised when they meet you in real life and they're like, you, you're the same, you're actually the same person. You know, it's, like, it's just it's about, about the same, integrity but... over popularity, right? Like is, is ultimately yeah. what it's about. And I think like the reason we're so repulsed with the fiat world is that the fiat world doesn't value uh, in integrity over popularity. It, 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 you know, it hands things to people who are well known who do bad things uh, rather than to, you know, to people who are, who are, who are doing good uh, but because of how, uh, political quotient enables, you know, extraction of fiat. Um, yeah, I think the incentive like, structure is broken. Are right? these... say, sorry, say that again. The incentive structure is broken. If if the incentive is to do good things, you're rewarded. People will do good things, but because the money is broken, the incentive structure is broken. There is no incentive to do good things, and so people will steal from it. And and that's that. When when you said you good know, liars same... at the top, good liars are good with working like with them. Then like it's mm -hmm. yeah. The fit the when we, selects for them. When we met at the at the beach retreat, there was l plenty of other people that I've been chatting to online. They were walking around with big smiles on their face because they're like, oh my God, you're all normal people. Because we've only met and chatted online before. We could be anybody. And you meet these people and we have normal conversations and we're there for the Bitcoin beach retreat. But we've had conversations about all kinds of things, about what our plans are for life and families and how we're going to escape the tyranny. And it's fascinating to me to be amongst a group of 100 or so Bitcoiners, all Wait, who have to me, that's almost the main identical... Thing 
Isn't that thoughts. the main purpose? Like, fuck all the Bitcoin stuff. Like, I, I see it as like, no, like these people have been like verified to have not to not be retarded and like actually be forward looking and have some hope. Right. These are this is th there are the black pilled people in the world, people that recognize the problems with the state. And then Bitcoiners are a subset of these people that actually have a solution to not just like, oh, everything's shit. Like this is actually a, a tool that you can use to, to be independent. And yeah, it's very hopeful. Meeting all these people, being around these people. Oh, it's it's game changing because you can get very black pilled with what's with what's going on on you know on Twitter and everything else. And and to meet people who are are doing that, there's a few of the guys that I met at the Beach Street. We're looking at uh, buying some land abroad. We're looking at doing different projects together. We're looking at how we can how can we set up some ham radios or something so that we can keep a connection when they try and shut grids off and stuff like that. Just things that we can be interested in that are both technically interesting, but also could possibly save lives or, or really help us out when the shit really does hit the fan. And I'd, I'd never really considered the shit hitting the fan to the extent that it would until the last year or two when I've seen things accelerate to the point of, oh, we, we might not have the opportunity to uh, just escape or do what we want to do. Things might get pretty squiffy pretty quickly. I definitely agree with the, you know, collaborating for communications and stuff like that. Uh, the only thing is, is that when it comes to the uh, getting, you know, getting properties and, and whatnot with other people, I'm a, I'm a little bit leery about that. Um, and, and I'll tell you why. It's just because there's been a few people in, uh, in the particular space that, you know, kind of um, attempted to raise money to, to do that. And things didn't really quite work out so well. Now, there are other people who where it did work out well. Um, and I understand that that's just the experience, but I just, the reason why I get weary about this, okay, is um, quite simply is that um, Bitcoin still, um, it still attracts uh, low level scammers um, because it is fairly novel, even though for us, we're in the echo chamber. Um, there's, it, it does still, right. It attracts really good people. It's interesting, right? It kind of attracts people from the extremes, OK, so you've got, you know, you've got these people from like they're very libertarian, you know, anarchists, stuff like that. You know, and you got these other people who are extremely progressive. And then you have these these other people on other extremes where it's, you know, it's all about the, uh, you know, like growing your own food, having your own land and everything like that. And it's all of these people are kind of brought together. And it's the same thing even for financials. Right. It brings in people that have backgrounds in like multi-level marketing and you know, and and just essentially grifting off of vaporware, you know, Ponzi schemes even. And these people come to this space and they kind of look around and they uh, kind of see what's missing and then try to create an offering around it, right? So I, I get very, and I'm not saying that any of the people that you met are those people, but I'm just saying I, I always have this like in the Bitcoin back of my mind. Bitcoin and running or Bitcoin and cycling or Bitcoin and whatever hobby I like or, you know, like there's this. this Everything's an offensive scam. Yeah. No, I know, but even but even more than that, right? Like, I'll buy. Like, so look, would you would you buy land with a complete stranger? I mean, sure, you've spoken to them, you know, you hung out with them, got drunk with them, maybe smoked some joints with them, but business is business, dude. I, I don't know, man. I, I'm not I've just gonna, had bad uh, experiences. That's all. So I'm not going to go into too many details of what we've no, discussed. No, of course not. These are these are. But what I would say is that I would like to escape the UK. Um, my my mm. goal is to get to the Azores in the middle of the Atlantic. I want to be I want to be searching for Atlantis and live out there. Why so remote? Wow, that's awesome. Wait, what? <laughs> Um, yeah, that's that's my dream in life, and we'll get to. That. I wanted to um, search for Atlantis too. That's super cool. <laughs> it's I've I've been obsessed with Randall Carlson and Graham Hancock for the past few years, and his uh, is it cycles of catastrophe or cosmic? It's a four hour presentation, and it's all about this. And I've gone down a big Atlantis rabbit hole, and I was speaking to uh, Jimmy Hoddle as well, who's been there recently, and he's like, "Mate, it's great out here. I don't have the money to disappear to the Azores right now. I've got elderly parents, I've got pets, I've got to look after. I'm not in the right place to do that." However, I am in a position to potentially spend a small amount of money with some trusted friends to buy a little plot of land somewhere that we can retreat to and just escape to um, every now and again, just go over there three or four times a year and start to just build communities. And this has been triggered by the, the beach retreat in North Wales. And I can't recommend that enough. I'll, I'll keep saying it throughout this, this place. Dragon does a great job putting that together. It's a fantastic mm -hmm. venue. It's a great gathering of people. And to be able to have that as the first node and have multiple of these retreat nodes across 
across the world, I guess, but building slowly with a, a trusted group of um, of Bitcoiners that, you know, and so my, in answer to your question, it's a risk reward thing. It's, if it's going to mm. be a small amount of money to buy, because in Portugal, for example, you can buy like 10, 15 hectares for 20, 30 grand. So you split that between five or six Holy Bitcoiners. Shit. It's a small risk to take if someone like it's a it's a small amount of money to go. Hey, it goes tits up. Yeah, I'm down three or four grand. It's no it's yeah, no that's... biggie. Rather yeah. than putting in a quarter of a million of a nice four bedroom villa or somewhere in the Azores. So mm. um, it's all about risk to reward, I think. But and 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 in doing that, you meet more people and you meet more opportunities. And I think that's getting offline and getting face to face with Bitcoin is the most important thing to do. And preferably not at the conferences where people are just trying to sell you their wares, where you can get to places where, um, you know, people are trying to build things and the, the local meetups we go to and stuff like that. I think it's really important to build that community. Alexa, you remember Ed from the, the meetup from not the meetup from, from Wales? I'm, uh, I'm not going to dox people, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> I'm just, all right. Well, I was just in Lisbon. Like when, uh, like I just did kind of, kind of what you're talking about, like go and go and visit more Bitcoiners that are living in different places. I think this is the way to do it and like yeah, go absolutely. like go go to their meetups don't go to your meetup go go to like meetups in different places around the world like as part of like some you know it doesn't yeah, have that's... to be the like tech meetup like there was this was like i went on a boat trip for a bunch of portuguese people like you know that's, that's my goal for the year is that I'm I'm sort of uh, Midlands based um, and I go to the Birmingham meetup and I'm hoping to get to Shrewsbury and Leamington and, and the Northampton meetup. We did. Uh, Brum, Bitcoin and I went down to the 420 party for the Bristol meetup and there was plenty. There's loads of guys down there and Self Bank does a really good job of education down at the Bristol meetup as well. And if people are in the Bristol area and want anything to do with Bitcoin, just look up for Self Banked or Bitcoin Bristol. He does loads of um educational sessions and that the, the bristol meetup is a lot more um sort of educational based uh in in the birmingham we we sit around and talk about how we're going to destroy the state and uh and rise up against it whereas they're a lot more bitcoiny down there self-banked isn't on twitter anymore is he he's not no yeah um, dude, oh, he's... well he is under a different name which again i'm not going to dox on here I no no don't give you his name afterwards but um yeah he is he is available but yeah i think self-banked uh his account got banned some time ago we used to follow each other and he was i mean i remember him from 2018 uh you know by far one of the best I, i'd say he used to create some of the best content that i used to interact with on twitter and uh, once upon a time i even I interviewed him there was so. a... oh cool yeah, he's a he's a really he good dude. He was at dude. the Beach Street last year, but yeah, yeah, he's a solid solid Bitcoiner, solid Bitcoiner that was uh, creating some really good content. You know, he was creating some good stuff. Anyways, self banked, good stuff. Um, so look, what's uh, what's got you most excited about what's uh, what's going on in the uh, in the, in the space? Right. Like as as from a pleb perspective. Right. Because it's always, you know, when you ask industry people, they'll, you know, rattle off 50, 60 things that they've memorized. Right. That they're super excited about. But as a fellow. Right. As a fellow pleb in the space, like what is it that has you interested and, and hopeful besides the fiat exchange? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the, the timing that I question is important because the past mm. few months I've been feeling pretty jaded about, and I don't think it's necessarily the, the price. I'm, Bitcoin is going to do its price thing. It's irrelevant what we think about that. It's going to do its price thing, whatever. Mm. Um, the adoption rate of Bitcoin, I'm concerned, I've been concerned about. Um, I'm less so now because I don't know if you know the metronome meme where it's, oh, I've got to tell everybody about Bitcoin before to save their lives or fuck them. I'm kind of fuck them on both sides at this point. I've, been, I've tried really hard to tell people about Bitcoin and I've been mocked for it or ignored for it and ostracized for it. And so I am, I will give anybody as much of my time as possible, hours every day if they want it. And I'll teach people for free all about Bitcoin uh, and I'll take them however, as long as they want to learn um, I just can't keep going to people and saying, hey, you need to do this. And they go, yeah, 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 whatever, because people are too comfortable at the moment. And it's really tough. People with their their wives and their kids and they've got their happy lives to be able to say, hey, you do realize that the world could be ending soon. You need to be getting prepared for this kind of stuff. So I've been really jaded with the sort of adoption side of things. Um, but what I am excited about is the kind of there's a, a lot. I, I don't really use Nostra too much, but it's. Um, it's the next step of decentralized communications. It's the next step of open source software being used and people can use it 
Whereas before, it's all very much, you need to be a dev to understand half this stuff. And now these things are starting to build up. And as much as, you know, we, we aren't supposed to talk about centralization, strikes launched in the UK this, uh, this year. Mm -hmm. And people who want to use Bitcoin but have are terrified of Bitcoin can use Strike and they can swap it in and out to cash and they can get to see how it is. The Lightning Network works and they can go, oh, this Bitcoin thing might be a useful thing. And I think although these things are, we shouldn't be pushing centralized exchanges or centralized apps or anything like that. In I'm some, doing one pound an instances. hour DCA, dude. Like, like Strike, they took forever to come, but like the, the, the DCA is not bad. And I agree with you that you can get like some noob to like use it and maybe get them to pay you back in Bitcoin or something like this. Like when people see of... how easy it is uh, yeah. and the Lightning Network works, and you can get their mind thinking about oh, maybe because the the whole price go uh, the number go up thing is difficult for people now because you know I was talking to people at three thousand dollars a coin. Oh, buy Bitcoin, and now they see it at sixty, seventy thousand. Most of those people are already turned off by it. They think no, no, I'm not going to be able to make any money from it, so they don't even look into it. When you approach it from a different uh, different perspective and say, hey, look, let me send you some money, let me send you some uh, sats, let me send you whatever, um, people go, oh, this stuff really does work. It's not just a big Ponzi scheme. It's actually a real currency I can use. So those things are kind of exciting me with it. Um, and I think if you ask me that same question again in a few months, I'll have a completely different answer. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just I just yeah. think the, the usability of Bitcoin is definitely becoming more and more. But I'm also very aware that we're 15 years in and that's nothing really when you think about right you know, I, I always i always have always said oh bitcoin now it's like the internet in the 90s it's like it's like it's a bit clunky it doesn't really work but actually i kind of regress that to it's more like the internet in the 70s or the 80s where it's mm -hmm. not really out there for everybody yet and it is really you're looking at you're not looking at um HTML, uh, sort of JavaScript or anything like that. You're at the fundamental levels of DOS of the really early days of the internet um, where people only like nerds like us would have been using it. So I think we've still got plenty more years for the adoption to grow. Um, but I think, I, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm excited by the speed that it's happening because 15 years is nothing really. And look where we are. We're a trillion dollar market cap and uh, people, are, people are buying billion dollars of Bitcoin every day. Yeah, I think I think that that's uh, an an excellent point, and it's something that I that I think about all the time, right? Uh, essentially, you know, I remember still being a kid, right? I'm a Gen Xer, and I still remember going to the store and like, you could only use your credit card with one of those swiper machines. You know what I mean? Like, you had to put yeah. the credit card in there. There was the paper. You swipe the card like this, like that. Like, think about that user experience, right? If you were to show up right now and be like, "This is our tech." Everyone would be like, I'm not using this garbage. This is this is a total waste of time. This isn't practical. It's not a good user experience. And I, I genuinely feel that that's where we are in this whole cycle, you know, like of, of this, this cycle of innovation, right? The people are going like this. We might even be like one step before that. I don't even know if there was a step before that. I don't think there was, okay? So um, in terms of credit cards, right? Um, but yeah, it's, I mean... I think that I think that we are obviously going to um, we are going to understate how or or I should say um, yeah we're we're going to essentially um, oh what's the word I'm looking for like we're gonna have a hard time grasping just how big Bitcoin can get in the future and I think right now we're overestimating what can be done in such a short period of time yeah. right like we're not appreciating I, I've talked about this before right with the lightning network you know like I still remember when it was 500 Bitcoin or less right like it was less than 500 Bitcoin on the lightning network you know and and believe it or not man shitcoiners were calling it dead back then right like obviously right it's not gonna work it doesn't work still not released they wrote the paper years ago it's still you know and all this crap and and these people will bang on that drum and the reality is is that today you know today you've got these you've got multiple uh plug and play nodes you've got people building apps that connect to your nodes and not only that you've got companies like start nine that are creating swiss army knives uh, of nodes you know I was what just I mean? about so, to mention start nine i've just yeah. set up my i've just set up my start, so good. Uh, start nine it's it's so it's so it's not that it's just so easy it's when you get an error it tells you why there's an error and it'll say yes. oh what you need to do is get this set up and so it's really quite beginner friendly uh but once you've got it set up you feel 
really quite technical. You've got your node, you've got your Lightning node set up, you've got the apps connected to it, you can remote on, and and it feels very, you know, it feels like you're getting involved with it when, yeah, the, the stuff that they're building and, and things like that are fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. All right, um, this is going to wrap up the uh, the fireside chat, and we're going to move it on over to Wrecked. Welcome back to Wrecked. Uh, this week I have three stories for you. The first story um, is um, is about McDonald's. So uh, basically, um, some uh, some gangsters uh, hacked McDonald's Instagram and shilled a shitcoin and made 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 some quick bucks and uh i kind of i don't know like like who who got wrecked here i i'm guess i'm guessing some 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 idiots who thought mcdonald's was was shilling some some shitcoin um but I, I yeah i don't know this kind of thing amuses me i like i kind of like uh f- like fiat tools being hijacked by by uh con men even if you know even if it is the scam uh it's kind of entertaining um i yeah. really don't even know what so, to make of that to be honest i can't yeah. believe anybody would have looked at that and thought oh yeah i'm definitely gonna buy that yeah exactly shit coin. To, <laughs> it so it with a better name. Like, like mcdonald's maybe maybe people don't eat it you know at all or very often and uh if even if they do why the fuck are you following their instagram uh, even if you even have Instagram, um, and like then then like, why why is that your source for like financial moves? Do, do you know what I mean? Like how 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 do you get re- if if you've been wrecked or know someone who got wrecked in this scam? Please can you contact Pleb Underground on oh eight hundred go fuck yourself? No, like but seriously, I would like I would like to talk to someone who who is involved in this scam if they you know haven't. I think I, I get confused at how people can fall for the scams because I see it every day. Whereas if you watch um, Kit Bogo or Scammer Payback or any of these guys, you can see people transferring six figures to people just because they phone them up and say, hey, you need to transfer this money to me. Otherwise, I'm going to close your bank account. People just panic and do things. And so it, it was a big eye opener for me in sort of 2021. I was I was dealing with a lot of friends who I was trying to teach about Bitcoin, but they refused. They wanted to shitcoin. They wanted to just, that was it. We wanted to make money. We wanted to shitcoin. And it to me, it seemed really obvious that it was a Ponzi and that it was a scam. And I was trying to explain, it's like, hey, can you not see how, you know, there's a pre-mine. These people can change how many coins there are in their system. It's, it's obviously a scam, right? And people were like, no, 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 this is real. And I, I, I kind of like, had to take a step back into my life and go, hey, these are these are grown adults that I've known for all my life, and they're falling for a really obvious scam. And for people like that to fall for it, there's just so many low hanging fruit for these people to do. And like I say, you look at that McDonald's thing and think nobody would fall for that, but somebody would have done. Somebody would have decided, oh, that this even if they know it's a scam, they think I'll get in early and get out before the scam falls down. No, people will still do it, I think. And it goes back to the incentive structure. If there was no way for them not to block these people or to stop it in some way, but if these people weren't able to be, they couldn't create their own coin like they can in Bitcoin. They couldn't create, they couldn't um, steal like they can with, like they can't with Bitcoin rather. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's It comes back to the broken incentive structure that people are able to do this because they can. Uh, and on a Bitcoin standard, you can't. It, it keeps people honest, right? Yeah. And and to go back to Walton's uh, original point, right? I, I want to meet the person who is somehow following the McDonald's Instagram account using that for financial advice. Um, I just want to meet that person, <laughs> and I, I want to know what it was that um, enticed them to decide that uh, the McDonald's Instagram was uh, was the thing to go to for the financial advice. Walton, you're you're like completely disappearing here. <laughs> you're getting so faded. <laughs> uh- so, there we go. Um, yeah. Well, I guess my picture's getting a bit wrecked. So anyway, that's not one of the stories. Wrecked. Oh, we're back. Okay, good. No, we're back. All right. So, um, what's up next? Who's next? Uh, oh, it's a friend of the show, uh, Magoo, uh, roasting uh, uh, Satoshi, uh, also known as Peter Schiff. Uh, if you want to know more about this theory uh it's complete bullshit but it's a fun conspiracy please contact me after the show 
Um, anyway, uh, this is Magoo roasting Peter Schiff, aka Satoshi. Uh, uh, but apparently, because uh, Peter Schiff's wife buys Bitcoin behind his back, and he said actually she did. No one is perfect. Um, so yeah, Peter Schiff, Mrs. Schiff, you are a naughty, naughty girl. I was convinced that he was a genius. I watched Peter Schiff on the um, Rogan podcast a few years ago. He's a genius. Uh, and, he's uh, Satoshi, and he invented Bitcoin. Now he's fudding his bags harder than anyone, and yet Bitcoin <laughs> is pumping. Like that would be you funny. know, Peter. But he was he genius. was he was talking about his. He, somebody, I he think he, was gold Rogan asked him, he said, um, so he was looking at a gold-backed cryptocurrency at the time, and I was like, well, that just seems retarded. But over the past couple of years, obviously, he's been quite an outspoken. Um, opponent of Bitcoin. And I was pretty sure that he's got a big bag of Bitcoin and he has to talk bad about it because of his gold. Until yeah. I listened to him on Mallers, uh, chatting with Mallers on David Lynn's podcast last week. I don't know whether you've seen that yet, um, where Jack Mallers destroyed him, obviously, in arguments. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this guy isn't a genius holding Bitcoin. This guy really is a moron. He really doesn't know. He really doesn't get it. Um, so I'd love, to, I'd love for one day for him to come out and go, no, guys, I was bullshit. And I knew it all along. But I don't think he. I, I really, I really think he's just a salty no coiner. Why does he sell refused. gold for Bitcoin? Because people I, pay him, I guess. I don't know. I mean, look, I, I've gone back and forth on this one. Um, you know, obviously, having seen Peter Schiff be dead wrong about Bitcoin for you know for a decade, it, it you know it starts to you do start to wonder now. I've heard the narrative that he just does this for engagement farming, right? Like it's just amazing engagement for him. Um, and that could be true. Um, to your point though, about him actually being a, you know, like a moron, um, his, his kid, right? Spencer, Spencer actually ended up blocking me because of course, right. He was all, he was all like about Bitcoin until, until he got scared and decided that AI was going to kill Bitcoin and everything was going to AI. Um, so yeah, to your point about him being a moron, sometimes, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And I was like, yeah, maybe, just maybe, like he is actually not really just fudding his bags and, and he really does believe the rhetoric that he's saying. But again, I have a hard time believing that's entirely true because to Walton's point, he accepts Bitcoin. Hmm. So if he really did think it was crap, unless, of course, he's just accepting Bitcoin right now because it's worthwhile to accept Bitcoin right now. But then the argument can also be made. It'll simply be more worthwhile to accept Bitcoin in the future as well. So I don't know. I just I don't know. Peter, Peter is an enigma of shit coining cope and no coining. And just, I don't know. <laughs> Engagement farm. I don't know. Too much. There are there are some people that that are like that. They they are um they call them heels, right? So a perfect example, someone like Logan Paul, he makes money by being hated. And I think if you've got that kind of personality where you don't mind that, I I that would horrify me to become famous by because I'm a dickhead. It doesn't make you even though it's making McCormack potentially. Pete puts the effort in. To be fair, um. You but mean he I, wouldn't I, be a dick if he didn't try it? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I don't think he's not out there to try and be a dickhead. He's not. He's trying to be like he's a, he's he's. I'm sure he's a nice guy in real life. He's a bit scammy. He's a bit shit coiny. Well, not shit coiny, but you know, the, the whole block fire and ledger stuff is a bit scary. And but at the same time, he's he's doing what he's doing. Whereas some people are like, right, I'm going to say something really inflammatory, and it's going to get me loads of clicks, and it's going to make me money, and I don't care that these people hate me. And that's yeah. a perfect segue into like my next tweet, which is because I'm sharing I'm sharing one from Udi. So like that, oh, that that's a very nice segue. Um, uh, blah 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 blah. blah. <sighs> We paid a lot of money into Reindal, who's a genius, and uh, he's built something, and we're gonna sell, we're gonna sell something, but you can't Four buy cats. anything yet. But uh, follow the follow the uh, follow the NFT nonsense, and um, yeah. So yeah. So more, cats. so more cats. Um, right? So more cats, right? So then, then there's this story about the Haitians, and so I ran a poll, and I said, uh, are the Haitians for or against Opcat, right? Because um, right now the the cats are cats are in the news. 
uh, a lot, and it's because of the Haitians, who apparently um, are eating people's cats. Now, um, I have a theory that maybe, maybe, maybe Taproot Wizards have lent a bit too far into this meme, and they're trying to get cats talked about in any way, shape, or form. And so Taproot Wizards are... are, are are not enabling Haitian boating accidents and and, and actually helping the Haitians to, to get a, to get to mainland US where they can eat cats and cats can be in the news and so then everyone talks about op cat. Um, I, I think unfortunately they're they're failing with this um, this psyop. I don't think it's gonna um, help. Even though they're now putting out memes saying don't snack on me. Um, I, I think I think they were behind it all along, and um, it's just you know it's it's unethical really. Like you, you know, leave leave people's pets alone. Um, you know, I I I'm all for covenants. I'd like I, I'm actually not that much against Opcat, but like you know, eating people's pets is you know to try and like lobby uh, for any change to Bitcoin is I I don't think is the way to do this, guys. Gentlemen. Okay. So this is my this is my take on 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 the the opcat thing but maybe it's it's kind of a wider take on monetizing technology um by fleecing unsuspecting noobs um and so this is this is kind of the the problem with all of this right it's awesome to try things right and break things and make them better elixir was alluding to that before right like just wants to see building and let's see bad ideas and let's see good ideas and let's see what happens there's nothing wrong with that all of that is great the issue occurs when um the people feel that or i shouldn't say feel but they essentially um they they know that what they're working on is essentially not going to pay them so they have to find a way to extract you know, funds from unsuspecting noobs that don't understand that they don't, that these things don't need to exist in order to prove the concept of these technologies and figure out whether these technologies are worthwhile to use or not. Um, so yeah, I just, that, that to me, like, that's my whole problem. So the way that I see this is, mm -hmm. um, people want to scale Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and there's not a lot of funding for uh, developers who actually, you know, want to do stuff for Bitcoin. And so, therefore, they are prime targets for shitcoin companies who will throw money at them. Yep. Um, and yep. so ra I think rather than just, you know, judging the space, I think people need to try and work out how they can help better fund Bitcoin development, Bitcoin open source development. Like, what, what are you as an individual out there listening to or watching the show doing to help... Bitcoin open source development. Um, are you supporting uh, technical conferences where you know where some of these people come together to you know c come up with some of these ideas? You know, are you um, you know donating maybe if you're one of the, the the older Bitcoiners into you know open sats or you know some sort of fund that is trying to help Bitcoin development? Like, are you I don't know setting up a I know, like a couple of guys in Thailand setting up like a you know an incubator to try and help various open source projects. Like, there's there's different things different people can do, but I think, um, you know, fuck shit coins, absolutely. But yeah, yes, at the end of the day, coins. like I I know Ben Ben could have taken more money to go to a Fiat gig, like Ben the car man, right? Like, and, mm -hmm. and he, instead he he believes he can he can take the shitcoin money and, and and build some bitcoin scaling solution we shall see um but this is a problem that that is persisting right that it that, that we all want bitcoin to scale but who's paying for it who's paying for the the, the development that needs to take place who's paying for these these solutions um yeah. Shout out to uh, Giza Fund, Giza Fund, Giza Fund. Uh, Metamec does a great job over there with getting um, sats to those people that are. That yeah, they're helping, on this but you've also got a bunch of like you know bullshit content creators, um, you know, on there that are just trying to you know like hold their hat out for some for some sats, right? Like there's yeah, and you got to sort the wheat from the chaff, I guess. And you, and and it, I think I'm hoping that let's say Bitcoin 
by the end of next year is up at 250, 300,000. There'll be a whole new crew of Bitcoiners that have got a lot more expendable cash to be able to, to fund this. And that kind of breeds it as we grow, the price grows, the open source projects grow and the funding grows. Um, the, the, the thing that I, this comes back to, which is the reason that Udi was, is doing this is to try and antagonize and get clicks to try and make money for it and i think as long as people are if people are holding out their hat and saying i need money because i don't have a job but i want to make bitcoin better for the right reasons <clears throat> people will donate to it but the, i think the way they're going about it is to try and make it through <clears throat> excuse me ad revenues or clicks or um getting to be able to go on podcasts to be able to get fees and stuff i just find it shitty uh, and I, I just don't like the way that they work because it's very shit coiny and it's of that ilk it is. Uh, that they come from and um yeah fuck Udi. it's well said yep so that's it for wrecked um thank you and uh phil what do we have up next all right we are gonna move it on over to the hopium <laughs> The Hopium is brought to you by CypherSafe. Check it out at cyphersafe.io. What am I talking about? The Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. 16 ounces of solid titanium for the pet rock enjoyer in your life. Maybe you're the pet rock enjoyer in your life. Anyways, check it out at cyphersafe.io. And guys, they're going to be coming out with some new products, hopefully in the next month or so. So be on the lookout for that at cyphersafe.io. All right. Welcome back to the Hopium, everybody. And that's right, guys. Uh, this week, even though it was some people would argue that that, you know, it was a bit of a bloodbath on the uh, on the markets, which really it, it wasn't. Um, there was no shortage, no shortage of the hopium. And of course, of course, we're going to start it off with Samson Mao's tweet, right? Um, yeah, the uh, the Godzilla candle. So look, I've been talking about this Godzilla candle for a long time. And and again, I, I want to believe it, right? I, I know that everybody, everybody that stacks Bitcoin wants to believe it, uh, but it doesn't serve us. It doesn't serve us to believe it. So, yeah. Down bad. Yeah, wait for next. Wait for next week. He'll be like, "Oh, I went to see um, a screening, special screening of uh, the film Godzilla in a private cinema in uh, some city. Um, this was on behalf of um, the very kind people of this country. Um, uh, on behalf of me, orange pilling the state because this is what I do now for a business. I uh, I help with a Bitcoin state adoption." Um, because my NFT video game never launched and I can't, I've run out of tether t-shirts. So, you know, got to do something, right? All I know is, is that Godzilla candle. I also saw one recently, this, uh, what, maybe yesterday about an Omega candle. Anyways, it's okay. None I've, of that. I've no, I've no yeah. problem with anybody calling for, for millions of dollars for Bitcoin. Yeah, of course. I, I, and, I, and I enjoy it. I love it. The, the, the thing I find funny about Samson is Samson's going to go and meet nation state leaders and talk to them about how they're going to be integrating their central banking system with, with Bitcoin. And then at the same time tweeting about, oh, it's going to be fucking a million dollars next week. I don't see how those two <laughs> things line up with each other. So, um, I, I mean, I enjoy it. Um, Samson and I follow each other on Twitter, and I'm, I'm yeah, sure he's, he's going to he's going to tune into my episode oh! of this. Uh, this uh, uh, so I'm not going to say anything bad for him, but um, but yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't really line up with uh, with going to Are nations. Are he's going to rug you on his shitcoin app, Aqua? Is that why you're not going to say his name? I uh, I don't use Aqua, so I I couldn't tell you. In all fairness, right? Like I've interviewed Samson. He's he's a friend, okay? Like I've met him in person. Uh, but I just I find that these these types of tweets just don't they they, they don't really help anybody um, because it's it's a lot of people that just don't have their own conviction. Um, and then they see that and they get all excited and then they get very disappointed, right? They get very disappointed very quick because obviously this doesn't happen. Anyways, well, no, anyways. One, no one knows. I'm sorry to just keep on that, but that, that might yeah. tip somebody over the edge to go, well, you know what, if, if Samson thinks it's going it's to happen, I'm going to go and put a, a, a leverage long on. And it might just cause a couple of people to go a little bit further than they should do. And so as long as people are like aware of that, like I've no problem with these comments, but like I say, it can really, yeah, 
it can cause people when it's someone like Samson who's got a big following and uh, people will think that he knows what's coming when no one does. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that that's fair. Or he can even cause a pump by people thinking there's going to be one and then he can trade the action that he's causing by tweeting. That's right. All right, moving on. We're going to leave Samson alone. All right, moving on to the... Here we go. That's uh, the Bitcoin Magazine Hopium Factory over there. Wait, this you is said leave Samson alone. You mean yeah, like we're leaving alone. Always with the great wordplay. Always with the great wordplay. Um, okay, so yeah, here we go. Hopium Magazine. There we go. Bitwise chart shows Bitcoin historically pumps in price after being down in September. So guys, we have just a couple of more weeks of pain, and like a switch, it will turn, and all of a sudden. The candles will all be green because history. Phil, why being such a bear? What don't you no. know about Pumptober? Let's go. Pumptober. All right. Hey, listen. I, I just like to temper my expectations, okay? Because uh, I, I've I've listened to many a hopium dealer, and so many have 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 not come true. Okay. Anyways, anyways, moving on, moving on, guys. If it wasn't enough that September is just you know a bad month. Check it out. BlackRock says Bitcoin could serve as a hedge against increasing global disorder and declining trust in governments, banks, and fiat currencies. So there you go. We have the endorsement and the blessing of the bank. Satan himself. Sorry? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Satan himself. It's like, ah, we're going to, we all going to make it, guys. We all going to make it. And the the last one, guys, the last one, that's right, Mastermind, fellow Bitcoiner, love him, fellow Bitcoiner and pleb, good dude. Um, yeah, he's right. World Liberty Financial, guys. Oh, boy. And in case you did not see this, that's right, guys. This is the presidential hopeful Donald J. Trump shilling his, his fucking shitcoin, guys. World Liberty Fi. And you'd think that that would have been in wrecked, right? You'd think that that would have been in wrecked. But the reason why it's in hopium is because back at the Bitcoin conference, there was a whole bunch of cheerleaders, right? Just standing in awe over, over Donald Trump and him saying the magic words, pretending like this guy's just not some random grifter, right? That has essentially uh, been able to grift the not just the bitcoin community right but crypto people on multiple occasions and it's just another it's just another grift it doesn't matter this is what people don't seem to understand it doesn't matter who starts the coin okay it doesn't make a difference it doesn't matter how popular they are in the end they are all affinity scams and all it takes is for that arc of people to realize that. And once more, enough people realize that, the bottoms fall out from these things. So it doesn't make a difference that it's Donald J. Trump. Like this is, it's going to end badly. I wouldn't be surprised if it's almost like an immediate rug pull or pretty close yeah. to one. But, um, and, and that's why I'm saying like, it's not about him, right? It's not about him per se. It's about the actual, the situation that we've seen play out over and over again. Just change the players right take somebody else and put them in their place anyways that's what we got for hopium guys we're going to we're going to 10 million dollars because everybody's saying the magic words elixir what are your thoughts <laughs> uh we, we've come full circle back to politics we've been a nice ways to right. close it off but I, I don't i don't know why anybody with anybody would ever think anything different of donald trump the guy has been a grifter his entire life and whether you're pro or trump i don't really give a shit but what i was i was really disappointed about his speech at the bitcoin conference because he didn't even bother to put a little bit of time in to realize what to and what not to say. Whereas uh, the day before, Bobby Kennedy got up on stage and fucking nailed it because he would put the work in and he would worked out, don't come to a Bitcoin conference and talk about crypto. You, you come along, you talk to Bitcoiners. And politicians, I, you know, you mean Bobby RFK Kennedy went it. to East Denver like that back too. in back in May, like with Caitlin Long. Like, what do you mean? Like, I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. Either way, that the speech that well, I heard. The speech that I heard was that he he said even if he didn't mean it he said the right things. So for Trump to go up on stage and not even to bother put the effort in it was just disappointing. And and so to see him re releasing shit coins, well, duh, obviously he was going to try and do this at some point. Yeah, I, I've got to agree with that. Uh, absolutely, I don't got think to he's agree. amazing, but I he he only went to the Bitcoin conference. He didn't go to the shitcoin conferences like like these other ones. In fact, RFK, but I he's believe... still shitcoining. 
that that's the thing, yeah, okay. right? It's like okay. I'm not saying he's I'm not saying he's any good. I'm just saying like no, no, which, which one did he attend? He attended he attended the Bitcoin conference, recognized recognized that like actually those are the people worthy talking to, and then and and he's trying to print money like all politicians. Um, um, whereas RFK is going to all of the shitcoin conferences. I think he even went on Charles Hoskinson or like uh, or the what's he called the Hex guy. What's he called? I don't know. Richard Hart. Like I think RFK is going on like every every shitcoin thing and talking to them as if they're all part of the Bitcoin community. Like RFK doesn't. RFK thinks that crypto is part of Bitcoin. Trump thinks that there's Bitcoin and crypto. I think. I think unless I'm mistaken, I think. No, Trump I, I think you're right. They're two separate groups. Yeah. Crypto is a joke, but they're but they're gambling degenerates, and they you know they're actually I don't know. Again, another another group of people that he should be kind of trying to trying to to get to support him, whereas RFK can't actually tell the difference. I don't think. But that's think, my view. I think that's an interesting point um, because. I'm not a hundred percent sure if he just doesn't see them if he just doesn't see Bitcoin and crypto as both kind of being a joke. He understands that they're both separate, but he he thinks that both of them are just, you know, whatever. Because he is keep in mind, right? Like Donald I Trump think he is did a dollar max. Before maxi. he got paid a shitload of money by by people in Nashville. And yeah. then went, Oh, these people actually may may have money then. Maybe they're not retarded. Because Trump just cares about dollars, right? Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's why I'm thinking, you know, it's, I mean, he's a dollar maxi. So I, I think that that's, that's why I believe that he thinks that all of this is just whatever, you know, this is what's popular right now. So, you know, I'm going to go with I think it. He's and... a Trump maxi. It's about whatever helps Trump. Yeah. And the dollar helps Trump. So he's, that's, you know, it... <laughs> I think he does own some Bitcoin though. Anyways. All right, guys, that's it for the hopium. We're going to $10 million. All of the cheerleaders are saying it. Let us know what you think. That is also going to wrap up this week's episode of Pleb Underground. Before we go, Elixir, do you dare tell everybody um, how they can how they can find you on uh, on Twitter or oh, X? Oh God, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm on. It's going to be Twitter. in the show notes, anyways. <laughs> Click on the link on Twitter. I'm desperately trying to get to Nostra. Uh, I'm desperately trying to find other applications where I can communicate with Bitcoiners without having to be resulting in this bombardment of clown world. So, um, yeah, find me on Twitter. Come read my rants at uh, anti-establishment and uh, how we can all fuck the state. And then, uh, yeah, that's about it, really. I don't have anything to sell, nothing to really promote. And if Very... people want to meet you, they have to come to the Bitcoin Beach Street next year because that's the only place to meet any cool British Bitcoiners. And if you're not there, then you're a loser and, you know, you deserve to burn in hell. All right. Thanks. Uh, and uh, yeah. Shame marketing always works. Definitely works. I mean, Shame you, you them. say this, but like I bullied Alex to come on the show like it works. So, you know, <laughs> look, I, it, look, peer pressure, peer Good pressure. Day. Look, peer, look. One thing that boomers got wrong, and this is this bit's for free, right? Boomers told millennials that all peer pressure is bad. Wrong. Peer pressure for good things should be done more. All right, that's all it. Right, we go right. home now. I appreciate that, guys. Don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms: Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream us sats, check us out on Fountain.fm. Walton. How do we end it? You can stream us sats through Breeze. Well, no, you can stream us sats so many other ways too, you know? Fuck shitcoins.com. Please like <laughs> and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Thanks, sir. Peace. Cheers, guys. More toxic, what? More toxic than the